Okay, hopefully I have something good for you today. Uh, what this is, is you've seen the title, it's a sliding table saw. Um, I went through a number of designs to build, I, I, first of all, let's, let's talk about interest. I, I really wanted to have the experience of building and using a sliding table saw. Um, uh, you know, I've seen, I've drooled over this uh, type of cutting method for years. Um, I'm not remotely in the position to bring a real uh, hammer saw in here or, or, or whatever model. Um, but I still wanted to have that experience, so I just went ahead and did it. I went through a number of designs uh, to get to this. Um, and I sort of had a breakthrough at one point where I was just like, you know, fuck it, I'm gonna just build the most minimal version of it possible. And um, it actually, a lot of the decision, the, that decision and that little flash that I had uh, turned out to be one of the best things for it. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you uh, putting it together, all the elements. I'm gonna show you what all of them cost um, and, uh, and then we're gonna run some tests on it and you can see how it performs. The first element is a rolling base. This was made from six two by fours. I used leveling casters because the floor is uneven here. Once the rubber feet contact the ground, they really stabilize the base. One of the things I got into with this base was constantly checking both sides of the top for twist. The 2x4s I used were particularly prone to twisting and I went to great pains to freeze them into place. I used a straight edge and a digital angle gauge to keep checking both sides to make sure they were even angles and therefore ensuring a flat surface. In the end, I was only out of true by a tenth of a degree. The second and most important element is the main saw body. I'm sure you've seen this idea before. It's effectively a box with a circular saw mounted on the underside. Uh, theoretically, I should make some sort of attachment that connects it to the rolling base, but for now, just the weight of it is keeping it in place, and, and during all my tests, it didn't shift an inch, so uh, I might not even connect it. The two elements bring the height of the entire unit to a comfortable or sort of normal working height of 36 inches. I primed and painted the MDF and also added wax to the surface to sort of harden it and make it non-stick. Here you can see the slot that I cut for the blade and uh, also the 5 16th holes that I used to bolt the saw to the box with. There's also a dust collection port drilled into the front. This panel encloses the saw in a smaller interior box which makes for more effective dust collection. So this is the main engine. This is a DeWalt corded worm drive saw. Uh, I actually had to modify it a little bit. I had to drill into the base to allow the quarter 20 bolts to be put in through the bottom. Also, the front miter attachment for the blade was a little wobbly uh, in just the stock saw. Eventually, I figured out how to stabilize it by shimming it with the washer, and I made a very firm attachment there. Uh, let's put a new blade in the saw. Just a side note, I was so proud that I whacked the diamond out without destroying the blade. The saw is bolted to the underside of the box. Again, I'm just using the existing quarter 20 tapped holes that DeWalt built into the saw. Uh, the main thing to do here is to check the blade as perpendicular to the edge or parallel. Of course, there's a little wiggle room in the holes for the mounting screw so I can adjust as necessary. Uh, and also there's adjustment on the mitering of the blade. The sliding table rides on 16 millimeter linear rail guides. Uh, these are fairly common and easy to obtain on Amazon. Again, the connections here are slightly loose uh, in case I need to shift them around for perfect alignment. Um, again, the, the modus operandi of this build is if you can't make it perfect, at least make it adjustable. The sliding table itself is a piece of three quarter MDF and I made a low profile torsion box and I glued it to the underside to keep it stable and also to add some weight. The 60 millimeter linear rails were carefully installed to be perfectly parallel to the structure. 
Now I began the process of sliding the rails onto the blocks and adjusting everything until I have a nice smooth glide, backwards and forwards. The trick is for the rail to move in and out of the rail blocks without jumping or catching, uh, just continuing on in a perfect straight line, as if they, you know, there was a, just a continuous uh, ball bearing track there. Once I have everything nice and smooth, I lock all the connections down and firm them up. And then I check it with a straight edge across the entire top to ensure it's all in line and flat. Um, there was actually some discrepancy, but uh, it seemed to work in the end. So with the main body, the engine, and the mechanics of the sliding table complete, I add a dust port, and I also add an on-off switch for power. The on-off switch connects to the saw, obviously, and triggers the saw remotely, so it has the same sort of functionality as a table saw. Now, a sliding table is effectively useless without a miter fence, uh, so you have to add some sort of fence for your workpiece to hold your workpiece. Um, I made a simple fence out of the remaining MDF scraps from my original single sheet. Again, I left the bolt hole slightly oversized so I could wiggle the fence into square and then lock it down once it was perfect. Uh, for squaring, I just used the standard framing square. So the very first thing I do is just simply confirm that the saw functions in this configuration. You can see here that I took the opportunity to test the decibel output um, and it returned 80 decibels, which is only about as loud as a busy street in a city. So it's, it's not that bad. Okay, so you've just seen me put it together. You've seen all the elements. Uh, you've seen how I assemble everything. Um, once again, the heart of the saw, the, the motor is a DeWalt worm drive saw. Um, and this is something I bought specifically for this. And that, again, was the, one of the big flashes. Um, the original, original design, I was gonna actually take apart uh, DeWalt job site saw to, to make it. And then I was thinking, oh, maybe, you know, I should just do the classic kind of circular saw in a box. Um, but all of those saws, the way the motor is oriented, the motor is out here. Um, and uh, that makes it very awkward to sort of have the, the sliding mechanism riding over top of it. The clearances were, it, it was, it's just extremely awkward. The worm drive saw has the, uh, the blessing, um, has two blessings, but it has the blessing of it being oriented this way. So the saw underneath the table is this way. The second is, it's just a goddamn powerful saw. Um, the, it, it, all the tests I've done so far, it just has no problem whatsoever blazing through everything that I've thrown at it. Um, it makes very, very fine cuts with a fine blade. Um, it's very stable. The first test I'm gonna show you is the classic nickel test. Uh, this is something that manufacturers like SawStop, for instance, do to show off how stable their saw is. Um, so we're gonna balance a nickel on the surface, turn the uh, saw on, and, um, and see if it falls down. Uh, of course, I did this nickel test long before I actually filmed the video, and I was very pleased and surprised at just how stable a chunk of MDF and glue could be. It's um, it's pretty incredible, actually. Uh, for contrast, my DeWalt job site saw, which is entirely metal, would basically launch this nickel into outer space on startup. Now, because the saw is enclosed in a fairly small box, the dust collection is focused on the only opening, which is around the blade. Now, finally, I moved on to the first initial test cut. Uh, I make sure that the cut runs smooth, straight, and of course I check for 90 degrees afterwards. It was off in the past and, um, and it was just a, a, a question of simply tweaking it at the, at the saw um, with the built-in miter adjustment. For longer work pieces, I add an aluminum extrusion on top of the fence. Along with some extra bottom support, uh, I made a very comfortable cut of a four-foot piece. The capacity for the sliding uh, element of the table saw is 36 inches. First off, the torque and the power 
radically overperforms my normal job site saw that I'm used to. I found it was able to glide through softwood and hardwood very easily. The final test I did was performing the five cut test uh, to see how square the fence was. So after making my five cuts and using calipers to measure my final piece and running the numbers through the Jonathan Katz Moses calculator, I was pretty pleased as a result of uh, perfect square. Again, I was pretty happy that I really just used a Milwaukee framing square and it produced that result right off the bat. Uh, there's tweakability built into the fence, but um, I didn't need it this time. You know, the main reason I did this is to have the pleasure of using a sliding table saw. Um, it's a it's a sensual pleasure that I've always wanted to have. And uh, so really, let's talk about that. What does it feel like to use uh, a saw like this? And, um, you know, it, it feels good. I mean, it feels like... It feels like fine dining versus you know fast food or whatever. Uh, you feel it's just this design is so it's so interesting. It's so like you feel like an adult or something. I don't know. It's it's nice. It's uh, it just feels great using it. Um, and I'm looking forward to having a lot of uh, other great experiences. Maybe adding on some other componentry um, and uh, just seeing what I can do within this system. Okay, anyway, let's wrap it up. Is this saw better than, or as good as a real sliding table saw? Absolutely not. Um, it's, uh, it, it does a lot of things really well. Um, it's, it's suiting my purposes right now, but uh, yes, if you have the means, please buy a real sliding table saw. It's just, uh, I've, I've, I've really never seen anything like this before online. I've seen many, many different sliding table saw builds. I've seen uh, added on attachments to um, uh, full-size cabinet saws, to contractor saws. Um, and I've seen it right up to a complete build of the, the trunnions and, and all the mechanics inside. I haven't seen this yet where it's like uh, a, you know, a very simple one sheet of MDF build um, and especially using a worm drive saw. I've never seen a worm drive saw integrated into any of the YouTube videos that I researched. So uh, this is something new, something new for me. Uh, hopefully it's something new for you and hopefully it gives you some sort of inspiration to uh, perhaps dip your toe into sliding table saws. Okay, that's it. Thanks for watching.